So friends, there is nothing in this world like North Carolina barbecue. And my friend Bill Stovall, that has been my friend since high school, said, man, we got to go to Sam Jones. And that's where we went. And I'm voicing over because I had a mic problem, unfortunately. So I didn't figure it out for a little while. So I don't have some of this audio. But hey, now, this was so awesome. I went back again and ate there. And macaroni and cheese, pork and or uh, baked beans and cornbread. It was fantastic. Unsweet tea and vinegar based barbecue sauce. And they chopped that barbecue up real, real fine. Interesting story that Bill told me about this place. Sam Jones, the guy that owns this, which is the grandson of the guy at Skylight uh, Barbecue in Aden, North Carolina, which I used to live at. He got locked up in Florida. They thought he looked like someone that had stole a car. That's his mugshot. Turned out it was not him, but they put his mugshot on t-shirts and they sell like hotcakes, as you could imagine. So the next morning, Bill and I got up and headed to Newburn, North Carolina. And this is what, uh, how Newburn got named. He was a citizen of Bern, Switzerland. He led the Swiss and Palatine immigrants to North Carolina in 1710. He founded New Bern, which was the new Bern of Switzerland. Elvis played here twice in 1955, May the 14th, two shows, 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock at the Shrine Auditorium and September the 13th, Shrine Auditorium. So we're going to take a look at the Shrine Auditorium. This is it. It unfortunately got hit. You can see how close it is to the waterfront. It got hit by the hurricane about two years ago. So it has been boarded up. It's not torn down, luckily. That's the main thing that I wanted to say. And so many of these things have gotten torn down and destroyed. This is the actual building. You see that little top there. That's a very mosque-like look. But you see that on many of these Sudan Shriner things. So we're going to go inside and take a look at what the room looked like that he played in. And if you're not familiar with Shriners, they raise money for uh, sick children is really kind of their thing. And you see this statue right here that was uh, is at the corner up there closer to the water. And their saying is something like a man has never uh, stood so tall as when he kneels to help a, a child, a sick child. It goes something like that. So you can see that this was relatively new when he was here in 1955. Check, check, check. So most likely they would have loaded in out of those doors and come right up here to the stage. Can they be a not needed dressing rooms? Maybe they were already. Yeah, well, they always have dressing rooms. You got to have a green room, a place to sit. Yeah. And they would have come exact. right in here. So, Bill, get up there on the stage and sing us a little. That's all right. Where do you think he stood? I'd say in the middle. I think so. Well, that's all right, Mom. That's all right with you. That's all right, Mom. Just any way you do. Well, that's all right. Had to be right about here. Yeah. It's 55. You think the girls were even going crazy? Oh, absolutely. They were going crazy. They were losing their minds. How about the men and the funny hats? Yeah, well, they weren't going that crazy. Yeah. That's a pretty good size room. Yeah, it really is. Some of the places I've been to are giant. This is a really large place. So we believe that these were the green rooms. Of course, you can see they've been modernized some, but you see there's a big room here. Then there are showers, bathroom here, Bathroom shower over here, or bathroom and toilets over here, shower over here. So I feel confident that this would be the dressing rooms since they had showers and everything up here. 
and they also have a back entrance. So this stairway would be a way that he could have gotten, and I say he, all of the different groups would have gotten in and out. This is a stairway straight out and down. And then we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you from outside. There's the two doors they would load in. That's the stairway from outside going up into the green rooms and then to the stage. So you could see that that right there is most likely the way they would have gotten in and out once they loaded in. Then we're going to go to the very front. This is the lobby area where they would have purchased tickets and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to walk in here. There's some uh, paintings from back in the day what the building would have looked like in it in its heyday that painting right there i'm gonna turn it and let you take a look at it this is stuff left over from that time that's what it looked like in its heyday you know it was new in 1951 that's a beautiful painting of it right there and this is a photograph of it and wow it was a really nice building that is how it would have looked back at that time now we're going to go up the stairs when you bought the ticket this is how you would have entered up these stairs right here and there's the ballroom. Look at the how large this room is. And it's got this, uh, uh, I was trying to think of what the flooring is. There's a word for it. It's that uh, parquet flooring is what it's called. And you can see some of the parquet is actually coming up. But that is a large room right there. Very, very, I'm, I'm sure that Elvis had to be very excited, but he was here with Hank Snow and also with Slim Whitman, and he was third on the bill. So that was May, and you can see Sl Slim Whitman, Elvis, and Scotty. Now, this is May, and you see it's Hank Snow big, Slim Whitman, Elvis, and Scotty, and then Jimmy Rogers and all the rest of them. Now, let's look at September. Notice it's Cowboy Bill Copas, Lubin Brothers, and Elvis and Scotty and Bill. Elvis and Scotty and Bill are bigger than all the rest of it. Let's look at another advertisement from September. See, Elvis is the biggest name on there. What happened between those two times between May and September? The answer is Colonel Tom Parker. Even though Bob Neal was technically the manager, Colonel Tom became a special advisor to Elvis and he started demanding those kinds of things. Those things are what made Elvis a star, friends. Elvis was great, but under the wrong management without somebody that is really taking care of him and pushing him, he was just another act. So this is behind the building it says Sudan camel drivers <laughs> I thought that was funny and you can see the bottom of this door has been damaged and washed out and there's one of those Sudan trucks they'll put these things they, they do a lot of parades I don't know if they if y'all are familiar with this in your state but the Sudan temple in our state in North Carolina where I was from would always have the go-karts and they would do that they would have these trucks that have the uh, band it's actually got a pump organ in it and they would do those kinds of things and put them in the parade also I think motorcycles uh, I believe that they had a motorcycle thing in Kinston, where I was from. They would practice in the parking lot next to the Coke place in front of a department store for the Christmas parade when I was little. This is kind of your hometown, Bill. Were you born here? I was born at Craven Hospital, right? About two miles from here. And you were born in what year? 1965. Which is the same year I was born. Yeah. And you never knew Elvis was here. No. And you're a huge Elvis I fan. I was born an Elvis fan. Yeah. I can't remember not being an Elvis fan. Because your mom's is still a huge mom's Elvis fan. I'm a huge Elvis fan. And in fact, some of my memorabilia is stuff she bought new in 1956. Uh, but no, I, I, I had no idea that Elvis was ever here. Uh, I have family that back in the day they were Shriners and wore the funny hats. And so I, I can remember vaguely as a child coming here to some dances or some kind of events. And we used to pass by here all the time until yesterday when I. Uh, met with you, I had no idea that Elvis was ever in my hometown. I'm amazing. This reminds me of New Orleans. Yeah, and Savannah. Yeah. Uh, Buford looks a lot like this too. How about Buford? Oh, I know, but spelling. yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Does Beaufort look this nice? I don't know. I haven't been to Beaufort. I at least don't know how to pronounce but it. But I've been to Beaufort. Say that. That's true. And why would you say Beaufort Puzzle? Right? This is very similar to the where in New Orleans, right about here. 
Look, right about here would be the gate that Elvis is, walks through, punches the guy. The uh, balcony would be right over there. And the scene where he hides from the guy around the post in the front of the shop would be on that corner. They're that close together. Yeah. Anytime I'm filming, one of those is going to be running. So we got the beautiful church bells ringing. We can't hear that because of that. I wish he had that blower st stuck in his... Caleb Bradham, 1867, passed away in 1934. He created Brad's Drink, which in this pharmacy right here, it was marketed as Pepsi-Cola after 1898. And that happened right here in this spot. Bradham's Pharmacy, you see it says the birthplace of Pepsi-Cola. The building marks the site of Bradham's Pharmacy where Caleb Bradham created Pepsi-Cola in 1898. So Bradham's Pharmacy, the birthplace of Pepsi-Cola. We're gonna go in and take a look. Come with. So friends, the building is not the original, original building, but it is the original spot. The building burned in, what do you say, Bill, 1910? Yeah. And he said there was a mural of the building here. Okay. So this is the original building, the way it looked back then. And you can see that the front door was in the corner. After they rebuilt it, of course, it changed quite a bit. But this is the exact spot where Pepsi Cola was invented, right here. Yeah, by a pharmacist. By a pharmacist. Yeah, or they, behind the counter, like yeah. that. Yeah. And just soda shop. He created a concoction that is still around today. That spun off to become Mountain Dew. It'll tickle your innards. Did you know that, Bill? Mm -hmm. and uh, several other things. But I think the inventor of Mountain Dew was from White Lake and Pepsi bought the Mountain Dew from, from somebody at White Lake, North Carolina. And I really could be wrong about that, yeah. but I remember hearing that when very I was a child. Cool. Well, they've got all kinds of antique stuff. It's very cool. I, when I drink uh, carbonated beverages, in the form of Pepsi, Coke, Dr. Pepper, all that. My go-to was Pepsi. A lot of you may not know Elvis' go-to was Pepsi, and I'm wondering if, if it was because he came to Newburn in 1955, <laughs> and that was all he's his go-to. Now, he drank Coke some, but he loved Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi drinker. Um, my daughter is 26. I have not had a carbonated drink like that uh, I drink carbonated water, but I'm not saying, talking about the carbon. I'm talking about a, a drink with syrup and stuff in it. Since she was a baby, she's 26. So for about 25 years, I have not tasted Pepsi, Coke, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew. You could take those drinks now and put them in clear glasses, and I could dr taste them and tell you what they are, and I hadn't tasted one in 25 years. I still know what they taste like, which is pretty crazy. Did you know that, Bill? I did not. I haven't had one in 25 years. I did not. So it happened right here. They've got the Minji's stuff in Greenville. So how does the Minji's tie into the original? I mean, I know they own them, but what I'm saying is, how does that, because it's got Hoyt from Kinston. I know Hoyt. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just know that they're the local Pepsi bottles. Yeah, that, man, they must have, have made it bigger than local because they're on this wall. That building, you pass that building. Right there is in Kinston. Well, you you pass this one. Yeah, yesterday. this building in yesterday in Greenville. That was the old Greenville. I remember that. My grandma's sister, Matt's husband, worked there, retired from there, Uncle Johnny. And they had these pug bulldogs, and they were all named Pepsi. When one would die, they'd get another one just like it, and it was still named Pepsi. <laughs> so it says right there. They're Newburn, Greenville, and Kinston. They merged in 1999, put them all together. 
So it's more about North they're Carolina a, they're bottling. bottling. They're a bottling group. Eastern North Carolina. Yeah. That's very cool. So they're a Pepsi franchise, Menji. So they're yeah. recognized one of Pensacola's most progressive franchises. So I think this wall just got dedicated to them because they're a local people. Local. Yeah. That's with the Okay. House. Makes sense. That's pretty cool. Pepsi came and tried to buy this building, the owner wouldn't sell it. That's so right. they have a lifetime. Uh, lease, mm -hmm. but they, but Pepsi. it's like Elvis's planes. Yeah, so you can't buy them. Yeah. But we'll lease them to you forever. <laughs> right. Well, they finally bought them. Yeah, but, but that was but, that's what it was Pepsi for a long time. Worldwide corporate recognizes this as the birthplace of Pepsi. Absolutely. This spot. Right. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. This is it. The birthplace of Pepsi. And they have a lot of kids groups that come here, friends, when they do try and pass and all that. Everybody says, Miss Pat, why did he change? Why did he change the name to Pepsi Cola? Where did he get that name? Well, we don't know. Mr. Fields and Mr. Tyler. I'd like to know where that building is at. Yeah, I don't know. It says Pepsi Cola. Yeah, that's the original bottling building. It says 1914 oh, okay. Newburn, North Carolina. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where was it at? I don't know. Well, where is it at? Let's figure it out. I think one of the problems is when I'm looking, when they put it on the schedule. I am one block away. That blower is down there. The other end of that block, I could still hear it. Good Lord, that thing is loud. That one right there has got elephantitis. Yeah. Broad Street store, Caleb Bradham, the inventor of Pepsi-Cola, leased the first floor as his second drug store. His first drug store where he created Pepsi was down there. So this is the second spot. It's called the Chelsea Restaurant right here, right now. This has an Elvis tie, friends. When Elvis played at the Shriners Auditorium, which you can see the top of it, right down there, right there, he ate here. This was William's Restaurant, and he came here and ate. And this is the corner of Broad and Middle. This is the corner of Broad and Middle. Bill is a local. He's lived here all his life. Still lives here. In fact, he lives upstairs. No, I'm just kidding. This was Williams Restaurant in 1955. It's called the Chelsea now. Elvis ate here. And if you get a chance to come to Newburn, you gotta come eat here. But this town is actually famous for Pepsi. Pepsi was created in Newburn, North Carolina. A lot of you, I bet you didn't know. Make sure that you come here and eat at the Chelsea restaurant. Really nice place. So Bill has a little story he wants to tell. You were upstairs doing an Elvis show. Okay, so many years ago, I used to be an Elvis tribute artist, local, mostly for charity. Uh, and I got hired uh, for a private party upstairs. Now, of course, I had no idea until today that Elvis was here. Uh, and so I got here early, went and set up, and uh, somebody downstairs, it was the manager, I suppose, comes running upstairs going, whoa, whoa, whoa what's all that noise? Uh, you're going to have to do this show and, uh, with, with no amps. Acapella. <laughs> no amps. <laughs> and so I went and got with the person who had, who had uh, hired me, and they did their meal here, and we got relocated outside on the waterfront, and I did the show there. So I could have could have been playing at a place at Elvis 8, which would well, have been cool. You technically did one song. I did half of one song okay. <laughs> by myself. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, Bill. <laughs> Let's go see Pepsi. All right. In Newburn, North Carolina, at the corner of Hancock and Johnson Street, the original Pepsi plant, which is this photo right here, was right here. In fact, if you zoom in, I'm going to zoom you see those two houses, you see that chimney in that house? They're still here. There's the chimney sticking up that you see, and there's the other house. Let me show you again. The houses are still here. I'm gonna zoom in on that chimney right there. You can see those two things in this photo right here. So the building looks really, really long. I'm gonna turn it this way Let me zoom back out. The building looks really, really long, but it really wasn't that long. If you look, it was from here to there. And it may be that this street has been widened a little bit, but what's interesting is the train comes right down the middle of the street. 
you can even see there's the train station down there and the train still has active signals and everything so it may be that the train still comes right down the middle of the street the original pepsi bottling or manufacturing cert manufacturing was right there and that is the photo now you know so bill when you were growing up you said that this was an AP store and your dad yeah. ran this store so you got a little story to tell yeah us about so this, this is this area is called five points because the way the roads intersect i suppose I was, I'm 54, so I was a little kid, and uh, this was kind of a rough area at the time. I remember for a time, my dad carried a 22 pistol out in the open bagging groceries here, you know. But the, anyway, my dad. But name, he managed this store. Yeah, he managed it. His and name you is. You said that a man got killed I at that convenience store right there. Convenience store, that coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, or one of these buildings was a convenience store. But he started carrying a gun after that. Yeah, so it was a, this was just a rough area back then. This would have been 72 maybe, somewhere in that neighborhood. But anyway, so my name is a little unusual. It's Stovall. Um, and my dad's originally from New Albany near Tupelo, Mississippi, is where our folks came from. So I'm a junior. My name is William Stovall, William P., William Paul Stovall. And, of course, then my dad's name is William Paul Stovall as well. So one night, he catches a shoplifter. Uh, it's an, it was a, it, the way I remember him telling me, it was an older black gentleman. He catches the guy shoplifting, and Dad holds him, right? And uh, so he, my dad calls, the way he told it, he, he had called the police. Uh, he's waiting for the police to get here. And uh, he said, well, what's your name? And the guy says, my name's William Stovall. And my dad's, you know, really, seriously, what's your name? He obviously doesn't realize that I'm the manager and I'm William Stovall. He says, no, my name's William Stovall. And he pulls out an ID and gives it to my dad. And sure enough, his name was William H. Stovall. And uh, so my dad ran him out before the police got here because he didn't want the guy's name in the newspaper for shoplifting at the store that my dad obviously <laughs> runs. Because they'd say it was him. <laughs> they would say it was him. So he let him go. And every so often, we would see his name in the paper for writing bad checks and things like that. People always thought that my dad was quick to point out, no, that's an H. That's William H. Stovall. <laughs> that's not me. Mine's P, William P. Stovall. That yep. happened right there at the A&P, friends. Mm -hmm. This is New Bern, North Carolina, and this is indeed five points. I did stay here, because that's what it said, right? Well, it didn't necessarily say that, but it mentioned Elvis. Friends, this is Ziegler Suites, and you can see they've got Marilyn out there. It's kind of got that kind of theme, so we're going to go in here and talk to the folks and look at this little doggy. Oh, yeah, hey. Get along, little doggy. Oh, blood. That's cute. Thank you. They're all shit six, Bill. So this is theme, friends. That's the Elvis room. They have the Blues Brothers, all that kind of stuff. Don't Very cool place to stay. Not. Yeah. It's in there. If you pull it out, the it's arrow will come in out. There. What is it? A nail? A screw or a nail. I think yeah. it's a screw. And that, you don't think that's stock? No, that's a nail. Yeah, don't, don't no, pull that I'm out. I'm not going to pull it Yeah, you it. need to drive somewhere and then get them to pull it out yes. and plug it. You know how that goes. Uh, try to sell you a tire. I know. Thank you. So friends, I'm sure I've got Bill with me, and you can see he's checking his watch. He's he's got somewhere he's got to go. Um, I'm sure that he came here with me many times. Or uh, what am I saying? I'm sure that he came here many times, just like I did. When we were in school, we would come do school trips, and you would always go in here, get your tickets. They would do orientation. That's where you bought your merch from in there, in this little office here. And you would go and do a trip inside of Trine Palace. It says 1767, Royal Governor William Tryon had this palace built between 1767 and 1770. And wow, it is just beautiful. And it did burn. See if you can figure out when it burned, Bill. See, it was destroyed by fire in, eight, in 1798. So it didn't live 
very long. They rebuilt it, of course. So what you're going to see still was rebuilt in the early 1800s. So that was actually before the Civil War. And this is the palace. It is absolutely beautiful. And I want you to look. They do reenactments here. Look at this guy. And I believe Sleepy Hollow, some of it was filmed here. The TV show Sleepy Hollow? He thinks the TV show Sleepy Hollow was filmed here. So when you go in this house, it's absolutely beautiful. On the far side of it is um, gardens and, I mean, you just won't believe it. I'm going to send the glory up so we can take a little look-see on what's on the other side so you can kind of see the layout. If you ever come to Newburn, I definitely recommend you come check this out. I've been here many times, especially as a kid. Did you come on school trips here, Bill? I did, a couple times. And it was, it's, when you live in North, Eastern North Carolina, this is one of the places that we would come. The school buses would pull up, and I remember we'd get out. I was so excited. Uh, I just love to come here, especially to see the gardens that are in the back of this place. Just absolutely beautiful. So this is an example of the gardens that are back there. I just always love the way this looked. You see that brickwork and all that stuff around it? And they have flowers. And I literally, you're not going to believe this, but I actually tried to create this at my house when we lived at 103 Phone Place in Aden. Of course, I was unsuccessful, but I laid the bricks down and tried to do that stuff, and I just couldn't make it look like that. You know that it takes years and years and years and years and years, and I didn't have that long. <laughs> to get themselves in the restricted air space. I mean, I want to do that to my house. Can't do it to a house, I don't think. So, friends, there's Tryon Palace right there, and we were going to fly the glory over it. And it says NNFZ. That is no fly zone. That's what that means. So, it will not allow me to take off. Daggone it. So, I want to show you where you were at. There's the Chelsea right there, which was William's restaurant. The Sudan. Uh, place that they played at. The Shriners place is right down there. This building right here, you see that steeple right there? Look at this photo. This was the Queen Anne Hotel right here. You see the hotel, you see that steeple. So the Queen Anne Hotel was right here where this First Citizens Bank is. And of course they made the bank look very historic. It looks old, but that is where the Queen Anne Hotel was right there. Yes, indeed it was. And we believe Elvis would have stayed here with the Hank Snow Show. So they played there, they stayed here, they ate there. Makes sense to me. What do you think, Bill? That's gotta be it. Gotta be it. And last year, my musician son, Will, was on a stage playing right here at the Mum Fest. Mum's the word. Mum's the word. He played right there. I hope he didn't get elephantitis. <laughs> so they've got this new thing here in Newburn. You see, push the button, turn on warning lights. No, no stop lights. They just have buttons. So if you hit the button, it's warning people. Where, where? I, I don't see any warning lights, Bill. I, oh, I see over there on that pole. You see it flashing. Yeah. Right there. That's just weird. <laughs> that is weird. So what'd you get, Bill? Uh, it's a buffalo shrimp salad. Buffaloes don't have shrimp. Yeah. There's small buffalo. Small buffalo. Yeah. And then I got um, chicken with smothered rice or something like that. Do you know, you know what is an oxymoron? Jumbo shrimp. So that's a fireman's museum now. I guess it's not an active fire department anymore. Mm -hmm. You want to walk in and ask them if they need Yeah. Know? So lastly, at the bottom of the newspaper ad, it says that you can get your tickets at Clark's Walgreen, which was this building right here, which is directly across the street from Williams Restaurant. And somebody told us that there was a sign here that would point into Williams Restaurant that would say famous from Maine to Florida. And this was the main highway going to Florida at that time, Highway 17. You can see the Shriners place down there. The Queen Anne Hotel was right there. 
So all of it was right here within just a couple of blocks. Yes, indeed it was. Elvis was right here, friends. He tightened up and came to New Bern, North Carolina. Yes, he did. So this is a postcard that Bill found for this restaurant. It says, Williams Restaurant, finest in New Bern, North Carolina, known from Maine to Florida, U.S. Highway 17 North and South, Ocean Highway mileage chart for information crossing Cape Charles Ferry every hour and a half. Now, something I find interesting is three of the cities are on this postcard, Jacksonville, Florida, New Bern, Norfolk. But if you look, you see Jacksonville, Florida down at the bottom, and then they went to New Bern, and then they headed to Norfolk. Cape Charles is on the other side of Norfolk, but it's the wrong direction for the next place, which was Richmond. So they, in fact, did not use the Cape Charles Ferry. So a little side note is the Cape Charles Ferry was eventually replaced with the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which many of you have been on. That is a series of bridges and tunnels that cross over where the ferry would have been. This guy's gonna chop some logs. Where are you going? I'm rubbing it. That Where are you going? It says be gone. Where are you going? So friends, this place is just beautiful. Look at these homes. They stay with kind of a theme of the old school look. But I want you to know that right here near this spot, there was a political duel. John Stanley killed Richard Dobbs Spate, former governor of North Carolina in a duel near this exact spot, September 5th, 1802. I don't know what they were mad about. But I figured it out. It turns out that uh, Stanley accused Spate of uh, flip-flopping and that kind of stuff. So they exchanged some harsh letters where Spate actually said that satisfaction which one gentleman has a right to demand from another. Stanley sent a letter back through his friend to Spate saying, you're a candidate and I'm a voter. My political opinions of a candidate are fair, subject for discussion, and I presume you will acknowledge my right to converse on this subject. Well, he didn't. He actually left for a period of time. Stanley did. When he got back, Spate had given an account to the newspaper. So, Stanley wrote him another letter and basically uh, said that he didn't have the right to do that and he was being malicious, low, and unmanly. He called Mr. Stanley a liar and a scoundrel. Mr. Stanley didn't take too kindly to that. He called for a duel and Mr. Spate died. So in the South, this is what we call uh, your mouth writing checks that your A cannot cash. Let's just say that. And it's a little more involved than what I said, but this is the condensed version. And this is a perfect example. So show us the spot. Yep, it's, it's actually right here. It must have been right there. So they put a stone down so we knew. It's not even X marks the spot, it's stone marks the spot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, yeah. interesting. The Kellenberger Room. So friends, we're at the library in Newburn, North Carolina, and you see it says the Sun Journal, Newburn. This is Thursday the 12th. And the ad for Elvis and everybody, we've seen it one time, the ad for just Hank Snow seems to be running every day. We're gonna to try to find it. Right there. So you see, this is just Hank Snow, same show. This is on the 12th, and I bet you the next time that we see that, it'll be a full ad, because Elvis still wasn't a big deal. Oh, there, I just saw it. So, here we are on the 13th, and there it goes again, you see Hank Snow, Martha Carson, Slim Whitman, Elvis and Scotty, the Davis sisters, Jimmy Rogers Snow, and Oni Wheeler, Shrine Auditorium. So we're hoping to find a write-up about it. So what day do we on now? This should be coming up on the 14th. That's 14th right here. All right, you have to go slow, look for little stories. Well, it would be the day after this. 
for the stories. The day of, you can see the whole right up. So we're going to go to the next day, which that's the last page. So let's see if there's anything here. Stay tuned. So the next day it says Davy Crockett has become new idol of millions of movie young, young movie going youngsters throughout the country. Hmm. It's Bill's granddad worked for Gusman. In fact, that's him. <laughs> so in the uh, 16th, they've got a picture of a Messerschmitt. Uh, you know, the RCA gave Elvis a Messerschmitt for doing so well with Heartbreak Hotel less than a year. Well, I'm, I'm telling you wrong, about a year after this newspaper would have been written. Interesting. They were just starting to get big in the States. And finally on the 18th is this little sports car and Elvis actually owned one of those too. So this is Santa Claus's house here in Newburn. And Bill said it used to sit in the middle of the street right here. Well, he come... sat on the side like where a car would be. Parked. So it would be sitting over here. Yeah. And he would come see it. Yep. I used to come and that's back in your day. So you sat in Santa Claus's lap. I did. Here in Newburn. I did. So friends, we had a great day in Newburn. We uh, saw a lot of stuff. There's found out a lot there. of new stuff. And there's the E-Man right there. Look. Yeah. He's everywhere. Elvis is everywhere. Even in Newburn, North Carolina. Elvis tightened up and played in Newburn twice. Blunt's Creek, okay. North Carolina. That's very scary. Yeah, there's some nice condominiums. I don't know how much they cost, but, oh, it used to be you could turn and go through here. You can't do that anymore. What do you mean? I guess you could never. I thought you could, so you can't. Yeah, he's, basically you're full of it. Look at that matador. Or is that an ambassador? Come at the car? Yeah. I don't know what it is. What? That's like an Impala. I think that's an Ambassador AMC. Beautiful. All right, let's go to the waterfront. Didn't move their boats out of here? Yeah. They, they lost them. So anybody didn't move their boats out of here, they lost them during the hurricane. Yeah. Not this past year, the year before, it was bad here. You either came got your boat or the storm got your boat. This is, reminds me of Gilligan's Island. That one right there is a stray cat. And a strut. So the purpose of the bears is Newburn. Mm -hmm. New bear. New bear, that's, I think. Cause there's, I'm noticing bears everywhere. Yeah, that's sort of their mascot. There's bears everywhere. All right, let's go. It's a new bear. So whoever set up Newburn, which I think was a Swedish person, and that was- He would say, Orton, 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 Orton. Oh, that's intentionally put on there. Mm -hmm. They're blowing lines out or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I see that now and then. This turns into the Tar River. So this is Bill's mom and dad's place. This is Bill and Scarlett's cottage right there. That's his, his boat. I'm not going to tell you what he said about it. 